any conversation about cities in the American West with great outdoor access, Boulder, Colorado is sure to come up, as will places like Jackson, Wyoming, and Salt Lake City. But one place that is almost never mentioned in that conversation is Albuquerque. Maybe that's because the Sandia Mountains lack the snow-capped alpine peaks of the Tetons, or the grand scale of Colorado's 14ers. But what they lack in size and grandeur, they more than make up for with diversity and ruggedness. Through the Watermelon 100 project, my goals are to share with you a bit about what sets the Sandias apart, raise funds to support a local nonprofit committed to enhancing the national forest, to share some of the stories of the men and women behind the nonprofit, and encourage you to get out on the mountain and experience its wonders for yourself. My name is Matt Thompson, and I'm an avid trail runner. Over the last four years that I've lived in Albuquerque, I've run thousands of miles on the mountain trails here. When I first got sent here by the Air Force in 2014 for training, Albuquerque wasn't on my radar as a place to visit, let alone to live. So you can imagine my surprise when I drove through to Harris Canyon from the east and saw the city right there touching the mountains. Despite only being in town for a few months back then, I tried to hit the highlights, hiking my loops and riding the tram, that kind of thing. When I came back in 2018, I told my wife I'd like to live close to Tramway, mostly for access to the trails. My family thought I was a little bit crazy, but I think I had a little bit of an idea of what the Sandias had to offer. But from that first time running out my front door up Osa Ridge to the top, I've been in love with the Sandias. Now four years later, I'm preparing to move east, but I'm not ready to leave the mountains just yet because I have some unfinished business. Despite all my time on the Sandias trails, I neglected to volunteer to maintain them as any trail user should. Without consistent maintenance, the trails here would be washed out and unusable or turned into an obstacle course of downed trees. Luckily for me, and for all those who use the trails too, amazing organizations like the Friends of the Sandia Mountains work countless hours keeping our trails in good shape. Just last year, Fossum logged 15,000 volunteer hours in the Sandias, maintaining trails, improving picnic areas, cleaning graffiti and other damage. This crew of locals, active since 1997, is the type of quiet, unassuming team that any local mountain needs. How many organizations publish a downed tree tracker on their website and update it as they clear their trees? Their commitment to the mountain is amazing. Fossum's dedication to the mountain makes my idea for the Watermelon 100 possible, so it's appropriate that they should be the beneficiary of the project's fundraiser too. I've mapped out a 100 mile route with over 30,000 feet of climbing around the Sandias, and I intend to run it in a single push this May. I'm going to bring along my GoPro and some friends and family to capture the adventure on film. Along with the run, I'll also be featuring interviews with key members of Fossum, sharing their personal stories about the mountain and its trails. Between now and when I finish the film, I'll be sharing bits and pieces of the story as it comes together. There's already one video up, with two Fossum members sharing a bit of their history. I'll also be uploading previews of some of the sections on the route so you can see what's coming. If you've made it this far, you're probably at least a little bit interested, so thank you. Check out the GoFundMe that Fossum has set up. All proceeds go directly to their organization. The link is down below in the description along with our Facebook and Instagram for updates. Thank you for your support and I hope you enjoy following along on the Watermelon 100 project. <laughs>